it seems like in the timeline after that, you started investing money in researchers, supporting them to, to do work. Bud Hopkins, Linda Howe. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I sought out the best of the best. And uh, they were part of the best of the best researchers. And uh, again, I, I, you can't, uh, you don't wanna be a, a one man band. You, you wanna embrace other people to try to, to accomplish more. Um, and we, we all have to do that in trying to grow in whatever we're, we're trying to do. Going, going alone is, is uh, it's a much slower path, right? So, um, so yeah, uh, Bud uh, was a great guy. I, I liked Bud. He was, he was uh, you know, an artist, uh, a really good artist, and a terrific self-made researcher, incredible, and an author. You know, uh, he, he was a, a clever man. Um, so, did they, was it results oriented or you just wanted to support projects or how did it work? And John Mack, I think, was one of the people you helped, right? Yeah, a lot of the research was um, topical, uh, topic specific and uh, uh, Linda Howe had uh, her category of analyzing cattle mutilation tissues and, and uh, hemoglobin and, and uh, to see if uh, high heat was used, uh, possibly laser, in, in causing incisions and other kinds of things. And so she pioneered all of that kind of work. Um, and, uh, and then uh, Bud, of course, in, in doing uh, abduction research. And, um, and so we were involved in, in um, and at one time, uh, we, we in a, cash, a crash retrieval uh, incident, and <clears throat> to our satisfaction, we verified that that, that did occur. And uh, Stan Freeman, another c crash retrieval uh, incident, uh, we verified that that occurred. And uh, both of these were <clears throat> in New Mexico, and. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and the first one wasn't uh, wasn't the Roswell incident. This other one occurred in the '60s, um, and uh, <clears throat> so the, and, and uh, John Mack, <clears throat> he was looking at it uh, from a different clinical kind of standpoint on uh, abductees. I sponsored a number of <clears throat> of um, <clears throat> free lectures uh, where he and and other folks uh, into this field researchers <clears throat> would engage. Uh, mental health professionals and um, psychologists, psychiatrists, and other therapists, and challenge the audience. We had maybe 100 people each time in major cities, and challenge them to come up with an explanation as to why these people were claiming these ridiculous, making these ridiculous claims about being involved in an abduction, an alien abduction. What kind of psychosis is responsible for that? You know, what would it be? Especially if there are multiple abduct multiple people involved in the abduction as witnesses. You got a collective psychosis now, you know? And, and so by the end of the evenings, they would run completely out of gas, the audience would, and, and couldn't, because everything had been answered, and, and to their satisfaction. It wasn't that they'd been told to shut up or anything, it's that they ran out of gas. They had no more, um, questions to ask because they couldn't think of anything else as a cause for, for, for these Might things. explain part of it, but yeah. not the totality of it. Yeah, John was a great guy. He, he was, he was uh, so unfortunate, his passing. But he, he was a great guy, and of course, Harvard was trying to get rid of him, yeah. you know, uh, trying to get rid of him, and um, uh, bless his heart, he, he fought back and won. Uh, the creation of NIDS. I remember you had offered a million dollars to these three UFO organizations. Hey, I just want you guys to get along and do some actual research. And they couldn't do it, right? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> okay, because um, there was a, uh, you know, our government program. That's later. That was later. Okay, so. Okay, so what you're talking about, I did personally. Yeah, I think it was pre-NIDS. I think it, yeah. was, it was right leading up before NIDS. Yeah. You got kind of disgusted with the UFO organization. <clears throat> well, 
<clears throat> there was always um, territoriality with the UFO research group, as is common with any any group populated by humans. That, you know, you're protect you're protecting your turf. You're trying to protect your reputation. You don't want to be ostracized. You don't want to be made a fool of. You don't want to lose grants. You don't want to lose your peers, the respect of your peers. So all these pressures go on all the time right this second, right now, this minute, uh, all, around, all across this country. And it, tie, it, it handcuffs a lot of people in being able to have the freedom to explore their curiosity. And th so these, the UFO groups were all different. They had their turf, and they had their kind of, whether it was Kufos, Fufo, or Mufang, right? Is that, <laughs> those are the ones? That's the ones. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah. don't ask me about the acronyms on these things. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's what they stand for. But um, they all had <clears throat> their territory, and MUFON was the biggest, and, and uh, still is. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> but working them together was like herding cats. It was really tough to get them because sharing information is part of the value of what you possess, right? Um, and, and having information might have been acquired through a lot of difficulty, you know, and, and so, um, and, that's, and that's not something you just want to freely pass around the table if you've gone to an awful lot of trouble to acquire the information right. or even some objects or whatever it might be, right? So, um, so that failed. Is that an impetus to, to create NIDS? So you decided to create your own organization? <clears throat> It, it could have been. I don't remember. It could have been. Um, I just, I, my philosophy is it's just a, a lot better to try to, <clears throat> to um, <clears throat> acquire collaboration and uh, try to get everybody rowing in unison down and maybe down this path and that path. It doesn't mean that you have to have just one path that you're all are rowing down. And be, why not have sympathy for another path as well? If the efficacy is there, go for it. Have more than just one damn path, you know? So sometimes it doesn't work. NIDS is created, National Institute for Discovery Science. You put together this world-class science advisory board, and it is, you know, people remember it as a UFO investigatory <laughs> right. organization, but it really right. was both of the subjects. Yeah, we had, we had two pillars <clears throat> of that organization, and, and we wound up, we tackled the, in our infinite wisdom, <clears throat> both the survival of consciousness and the UFO topic because we didn't know any better. And <clears throat> we bit off a lot more than, than we could chew and it, we finally came to a point, <clears throat> we had a very sizable board, um, a, a group of folks, uh, science advisory members, and <clears throat> you say, you know, we're, we're, they were world class, they, they really were, and um, from all different kinds of backgrounds. I was very proud of who all these people were and are, you know. Hal Putoff, Kit Green, Jacques Vallée, two astronauts, you know, Edgar Mitchell. Um, <clears throat> and then on the, on, the, on the consciousness side, there were some big names there as well. Ian Stevenson? Ian Stevenson, Bruce Grayson, Emily Cook, and Jessica Utz were there. Uh, and Ian was a, was a great guy, great researcher. And, you know, he's so, he was world famous, <clears throat> and uh, uh, rightfully so. And they were into the survival topic. <clears throat> so um, there came a time when uh, <clears throat> we began to realize <clears throat> that it seemed to be easier. There were more opportunities on the ET UFO subject to pursue, to do research on. And <clears throat> Some were quite enticing and exciting, um, but there were so many more multiple kinds of categories. <clears throat> the, the survival presented, uh, um, at that time, a more of a difficult challenge. And the UFO side sort of took over, and the consciousness side kind of went away. <clears throat> it did. 